Adrenaline Radio. My name is Fred Blanchard, host of Adrenaline Motorsports on 1680 AM on your dial. Uh, this evening, uh, we have an in-studio guest, uh, Gary Richards uh, from Bonneville uh, fame, and uh, we're going to have some conversation with him and regarding projects and uh, when everything started in the early years of land speed racing. Uh, the uniqueness of our guest tonight is that uh, it wasn't a four-reel vehicle that uh, he ran. It was a motorcycle, too. I want to get back to uh, this Dixon Motor Project. I, I've been thinking about that and having uh, the exhaust valve uh, on top of a flathead that we know as a flathead and exhausting out the top with valves and uh, that type of thing. Now, in today's world, uh, it would be a collectible. I mean, that's how I would look at something like that. And there's a new generation out there that are very keen and interested in these unique engine parts. And I know that has been found in uh, the areas of four-cylinder engines. And I know that there's been collectors out there accumulating things like that. And then we've been to a couple of private museums, and we've seen a lot of flathead parts in various sizes. I, I, I know that, uh, for example, in circle track racing and Bonneville, uh, they were running uh, the Ford Flathead V860s, uh, and that was a unique engine in unto itself. I, I never did find out what they were originally designed and used for. Do you know anything about that at all, or just uh, something that was happened to be there? Or? Well, I'm, I'm sure most of them were built specifically for racing. Uh, obviously, the overhead cam stuff was for Indianapolis and, and probably other uh, circle track you know, venues. Um, well, your, your Dixon head, though, I find now, did you end up, uh, did you had casting patterns to make all this stuff? or did, where, where did the, Well, where, no, I didn't. I, I ended up with a single cylinder head, and I asked my aunt where, you know, where, where its mate was, and she had no idea. So your aunt was the one that said that there were some parts available for you to have a look at? Is that what well, it was? Well, yeah. I, as I said earlier, when my dad passed, uh, she said that she had some things in storage for him because uh, we moved around quite a bit in my younger days. Um, and the, there were some photographs and magazines and so forth, and that one sold her head. So I don't know if, you know, if somebody had thrown it out or scrapped it for the aluminum or Whatever, but there was only one. So, so it was a it was actually an aluminum head back in the, in that era. That, huh? That's true. Um, wow. See, people don't understand that aluminum really wasn't a popular building material back in the early days, and to have somebody that knew how to design a wood casting pattern and then go ahead and cast a part and then machine it and put all the integral working parts in it. Uh, that's uh, indeed a unique job into itself, and you're telling me that you only had one of these. Only one of these. Um, yeah. Um, but that you know, Dixon was the first four-port exhaust overhead conversion. There were many three-port uh, heads made in earlier days, uh, Maxi and Alexander, and and those are both F heads like the Dixon. When you mentioned four-port, maybe you can share a little information well, that's on that. One exhaust port per cylinder. Uh, as opposed to the Alexander and the and the Maxi, uh, the Maxi I believe is the one Escandarian has on his roadster. The two center ports go together and then come out of the head, uh -huh. which which means that you can get exhaust valve overlap. You get exhaust going into the other cylinder when you don't want it. Uh -huh, I see. <clears throat> well, so unique in its own design, uh, it came about to where. Now you are currently now resurrecting or re remanufacturing this particular cylinder head package. Is that what it a package? Well, I call it a package. Yeah, because it, it, it is a package. It's like it's, a kit, I guess. It's, it's a kit, and it's uh, I'm making a few sets. Um, it's I've been trying to keep it as a hobby. It's just I know there's not going to be a a large production there. At least I can't believe that there is. Um, well, I don't think enough people know about your product. Well, I, I, I think that, uh, and it's called the Dixon Head, and basically what you have here is uh, if somebody's building a custom flathead motor, which I know now has been brought back into the nostalgia street rod scene, uh, you have uh, a variety of flathead parts out there, and the reason I know that is because of the Grand National Roadster Show that was held several weeks ago 
there was a whole building dedicated to our early model engines uh, in early model bodies, uh, and they, they call them today rat rods. And in that rat rod venue, if you went in there and looked at all of these different unique motors, uh, we saw parts that we had never seen before that had been in the archives, just like what you're talking about here with your Dixon head. And uh, I really think that uh, uh, that might have a, a, a new home found in, in that particular venue because these uh, young people uh, don't spare the dime. Uh, they they find a unique engine part, and they apply it, and they, they go right ahead and uh, build a complete car out of it. I've seen things on some of these cars that I don't think uh, that there's been one or two or three made. And uh, But I think that uh, this Dixon head. Now, did, did you create also... Uh, so you actually, what what parts did you use to re-resurrect this thing? I mean, where did you find the valves and the springs, and oh, did you have to make all that stuff yourself? What what did you do? Well, actually, I the, the modern 350 Chevrolet exhaust valve is so close to the Ford, it's just you know, a few thousands longer, actually. Uh huh. So I I just bought what was a lot less expensive than using the old Ford stuff. Because they just made so many Chevrolets, you could buy. So you're talking about things that were readily available. Readily available, and, and, and a lot less expensive and, than and buying and old stock in the current market, right? And you know, it's a more modern stainless valve with hard seats and all the things that weren't available back then. Well, what did you do to have to develop the whole motor? Now, I mean, you you can build a head, but now where, where did the rest of it come from? I mean, I'm sure there's a difference in the pistons and uh, that kind of thing, and uh, any difference in the cam timing or anything like that. Uh, you'd have to have a – now, Escondarian says you don't need a, a, a special cam. He thinks the 400 but would work fine. But I, I like to get uh, a special overhead valve just for the exhaust, just that you don't have way too much exhaust lift. Uh, there's no reason for that. Um, so you consulted with the cam father himself, uh, Ed cam. Escondarian, huh? Well, yeah. they're none better than uh, – 60 years or 70 years of experience in cam grind, you need to find out if that's the thing you want to run. Well, that's, that's you know, he, he, he alluded to uh, Art Chrisman. That's what he likes to put in his Arden motors is that 404 Esky cam. So, so and that it should work fine with yours. But I mean, you can only get about 400 lift with the on the inlet, so there's no point in having 600 on the exhaust. Uh, uh, unless you put in a a, a billet cam and t- pull out the the, the inserts, you get about 500 lift. But still, there's no reason to have more lift on the exhaust than than the inlet. 